In this installment, we're going to be going over the Sunday night football showdown slate on DraftKings between the Indianapolis Colts going up against the Dallas Cowboys. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Chef D, and I'm here to give you the winning ingredients for the Sunday night showdown slate on DraftKings between the Indianapolis Colts and the Dallas Cowboys. But before I deep dive into that, guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. We're looking at my page right now. Guys, we're at 1.18 thousand subscribers. Let's continue to boost those numbers up. I just dropped the game's best picks, the best bets video a uh, couple uh, last night. Guys, check that out. If you want my 100% official plays, the plays that I'm going to put out on Patreon, you guys got to sign up for it. That link will be provided down below. If you want DFS, betting and fantasy football advice you gotta sign up for the patreon if you want the 100 percent locks the first thing we're going to look at before we get to the captains and the flex ops will be the injury report injury report for this colts and cowboys game we're going to start off with the colts uh out on kenny moore that is going to be a significant out there that's their one of their best defending cornerbacks mainly nickelback and kenny moore uh standout cornerback that they have he is going to be out for this game that's going to hurt them when you're going up against uh this dallas cowboys team jelani woods their young rookie tight end it looks like he's going to play he got a full practice in on friday um, everyone else looks like they're going to be fine. They got Braden Smith tackle. He's going to be out. And then Isaiah Rogers is going to be trending towards playing as well. Uh, Quiddy Pay looks like he's going to be back as well. Defensive end. That's going to help their defense uh, alongside of their stout um, D tackle that they have as well. Next, for the Cowboys side of the football, Trayvon Diggs looks like he's going to be fine. Michael, Ga Michael Gallup looks like he's going to be fine. Anthony Barr. Uh, J. Ron Curse. Everyone looks like they're going to be fine. There's no major out for the Dallas Cowboys. Let's get into the captain. Starting off with the El Capitans, we are going to look at C.D. Lamb at the top of our list. C.D. Lamb here. Um, it looks like it's a bad matchup in Indianapolis Colts. The Colts have just been in poor, poor, low scoring environments that's the reason why but we're not gonna shy away from this secondary here this is a very poor team uh obviously jeff saturday is trying his best but what they put on the film that we saw against the steelers was absolutely horrible george pickens had a great day um just some bad connections with deontay johnson so we can go to the well here with cd lamb as their number one option he came through against the giants with 20.7 fantasy points six receptions 11 targets 106 yards so i like cd lamb to have another solid uh, game in this one going up against these indianapolis Colts. the question is are they gonna stick around and keep this close for to allow the dallas cowboys to continue to throw the football that's going to be the main question there so uh upside is there but the game environment where the colts are lacking to keep up with the dallas cowboys can factor into this passing game so cd lamb will be mentioned uh not might not be one of our favorite plays we might be leaning more towards the running backs all right Dak prescott as well um he technically is in a good spot if we're going to fantasy points allowed to that quarterback position we're going to go over here we're going to flip that all the way around and then we have the indianapolis colts here 21 overall 19th in the red zone allowing 204 yards but only one td per game all right um we could still go here with that prescott we've seen three straight games in a row against minnesota green bay and chicago with over 20 fantasy points so the upside is there a poor performance well a middling performance against the giants but that equal into a win so that was good enough for the cowboys to get by but he only had 16 fantasy points in that one look like i said about cd lamb i'm not gonna shy away from these numbers here this is the more dominant team they should put a beating on this team you got a minus 10 uh point spread as well so that's going to lean more towards the home team and then the road team and the colts are we probably most likely going to struggle in scoring the football with this top tier uh defensive line getting to matt ryan all right so Dak prescott is going to be um someone that we're going to mention but might not be our favorite okay uh next play will be on the indianapolis Colts side if they have any chance of winning this football game they're going to need 
to feed Jonathan Taylor. The key, the key reason why is we're looking at fantasy points allowed to that running back position. We're going to flip that around. And then the Dallas Cowboys right now, the last past three, uh, three to four weeks have been struggling. They're allowing 117 rushing yards per game and 4.9 yards a carry. All right. That's going to equal to fantasy production for Jonathan Taylor. All right. We can't rely on Matt Ryan uh, taking a three step, five step drop and thinking he's going to be able to find everyone. No, that, that's a problem. Michael Parsons is going to be coming around that corner and we got top tier corners on the on the Dallas Cowboys side. They're going to be locking up uh, Michael Pittman, Alec Pierce, Paris Campbell, guys like that. So Jonathan Taylor is going to be the main play on the Colts side that I'm going to lean towards at that captain position. All right. Um, other mentions at captain, we got Michael Pittman. This is their number one wide receiver. He's going to get the majority of the targets. We saw 11 targets against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Seven receptions, 61 yards. Did get in the end zone finally. Uh, this is second touchdown all season long. So it was good to see, excuse me, it was good to see Michael Pittman get in that end zone. Got your 19 fantasy points. Uh, we can't consider him at the captain's spot, but not my favorite, all right? The favorites that we're going to look at. All right, we're going to we're going to change it up a little bit. Tony Pollard and Ezekiel Elliott. All right, you're going to have to choose one of these two as that captain position. Uh, the more explosive back is Tony Pollard. All right, Pollard got 18 touches, 60 yards, came through with uh, two receptions as well. Only eight fantasy points. So that was a downturn of what we saw the previous three weeks. Obviously, some of those games were with uh, Zeke Elliott out. So uh, um, Tony Pollard is in a situation where they're probably going to be up. They're going to be running that ball out in that third and fourth quarter. Uh, I like Tony Pollard as a captain option, and I also like Ezekiel Elliott as a captain option as well. All right, they're going to force feed these backs. They have a nice dual threat that they got right here. 16 to 92, he got in the end zone. This is their number one back when they get in that red zone situation. It's been Ezekiel Elliott. Look at the numbers. We have six touchdowns in the last past five games that Ezekiel Elliott has played, he's getting in the end zone. So this is going to be one of my favorite plays at captain here in Ezekiel Elliott, uh, where obviously Cowboys should be dominant in this game against the Indianapolis Colts. All right. One other play at captain before we move on to the flex hops will be this defense. All right. We're going to switch it up a little bit. This defense, um, obviously they were the number one scoring defense last year, toned down just a little bit this year. Um, but this is a perfect environment where their pass rush is going to get at Matt Ryan. He is immobile. He is a sitting duck. And that does not mean well for the Indianapolis Colts. But it does mean very well for that Dallas Cowboys defense. They should be racking up interceptions, sacks, hopefully get a safety. Um, it's going to be havoc uh, for this defensive unit here going up against the Indianapolis Colts. I love the Cowboys as a captain option uh, for this slate. Let's move on to the flex ops. Next will be the flex ops. And we're going to get into some of these secondary options on this Dallas Cowboys side. Maybe we find some gems on the Indianapolis Colts side. Uh, but I'm more leaning towards a five to one type of stack in this game environment between these Colts and these Dallas Cowboys. Uh, let's start off with Michael Gallup. Michael Gallup, it, we went over the injury part. He should play in this game. He looked uh, like his old self in that game against the Giants. Unfortunately, he dropped a big, big touchdown pass. But um, if CeeDee Lynn um, gets double covered or, or bracketed, Michael Gallup has... Uh, the wherewithal to break out in this particular game against these Colts at 6,400. I could consider uh, Michael Gallup as a flex option. Matt Ryan, we're going to totally fade. I'm not going to mention him. Mate, mate, no, we're not. No, no, we're not. We're not doing it. No, 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 no. We're not playing Matt Ryan. No, he that that was so bad. What we saw from them last week was so bad. It's only going to get worse against this defensive line. I can be super contrarian and still not have enough guts to play Matt Ryan, even at flex. I see it as, as a waste, even at flex. Nah, nope, can't play it. We're going to continue to go down. We're going to be looking at defenses and kickers. Well, mainly kickers. We are not playing the Indianapolis Colts uh, defense at all. So we can consider the both kickers on both sides. We'll throw in Brett Maher um, and we will throw in uh, Chase McLaughlin. 
All right. Both of these guys are averaging almost 10 fantasy points per game. Um, and Indianapolis is probably going to take their points the best way they can. And that might be just kicking field goals. McLaughlin has some upside here. He has a game against Philly, which uh, was a tough game environment there. He got 12 fantasy points, 11 fantasy points against Washington. He's looking like he's playing well against the NFC East here. Uh, let's see. He has another game against NFC East. No, but so far it's 12 and 11 against NFC East opponents. Now he's going against the Dallas Cowboys. Um, I think that's their best way to score uh, for this team. Dal uh, Dalton Schultz has become a favorite target for um, Dak Prescott. It hasn't become. He, he was last year. Uh, and he's looking like his old self. Coming off that game against the Giants where he had two touchdowns in that one. 19.1 fantasy points. We could definitely go back to the well here. Dalton Schultz. Uh, Paris Campbell um, is emerging just a little bit. We saw some upside there in week 10 where he had 20 fantasy points against Philly. He had five for six for 67 as well. Um, not a lot of volume in that Pittsburgh game. They played absolutely putrid, uninspired football. But if I'm looking to someone that's going to be a cheaper salary other than Michael Pittman, since I'm paying up for Jonathan Taylor, then I can go with Paris Campbell. All right. Um, I think the tight ends is going to be the key here for the Indianapolis Colts. Matt Ryan loves to check down to his tight ends. And their main guy that's been emerging has been Jelani Woods. We saw eight receptions on nine targets and 98 yards against Pittsburgh in that game. 17 fantasy points. That was a bright spot to see. He's looking like he's going to be trending towards playing in this one. Um, after he missed practice on Wednesday and Thursday, he got in a limited at least on Friday. So Jelani Woods is someone that we can consider um, as a flex play because of the volume we saw the previous week. Alec Pierce uh, looks like he's been falling after having an OK start at the beginning of the season. Um, so we're going to stay away from him. Kyle Granson is their number three tight end. They've been splitting a lot of work, but the emerging Jelani Woods has usurped some of those touches from Kyle Granson and from Moali Cox. So it was Moali Cox at the beginning of the season. Jelani Woods has been stepping up as of late. So if you feel like going with Moali Cox, he is the number two tight end. They've been splitting work between Woods and Moali Cox. Um, he had some upside games earlier in the season as well. He's had uh, 26 against uh, Tennessee, and that's pretty much it. So we're going to stick with Jelani Woods if I had to choose one tight end in this trio. And let's see if we have any other options down below. Maybe we might get uh, a house call to one of these other tight ends as well. They use Ferguson, who was 3 for 57 last week against the Giants. And they also use Hendershot as well. So they're using a multiple of tight ends here in that red zone area. They can get very, very creative. As you see, Hendershot got a rushing touchdown last week. So if we're going to focus on the three main plays for our lineup bills, that's going to be the Cowboys defense. That's going to be number one. I love them. I think Jonathan Taylor is the only cult I can play in this type of game environment. And if I had to choose a running back between Tony Pollard and Ezekiel Elliott, give me Elliott, who's going to get the ball definitely at that red zone environment. So we're going to stick here with the Cowboys, Jonathan Taylor and Ezekiel Elliott. Other guys you could fill in would, would be the kickers as well. It's going to be a very ugly, ugly slate and very, very one-sided. I would lean more towards a five uh, Dallas Cowboy to one Indianapolis Colts stack. So thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to that channel. Make sure you follow me on, on Instagram and Twitter at MetsNetsJetsD. And I'll be back with another video very soon. All right. Peace out, guys.